Okay, so first of all, let's talk about prep. I'm going to sp split this bat into different varieties. So this first one is a roll log, and you just roll it over. Um, super simple, don't roll it too tight, don't overthink it. Basic. The next way is to just <laughs> spin it <laughs> the way it is. So I made a mini bat to demonstrate that one. And then you can strip it down, mimicking a comb chop or a roving. Um, and then the final way is zigzag. So you pull it apart in this sort of pattern. It's really hard to explain with your words, but once you see it, it's super easy. Um, and the way this works is as you draft it, you gently draft out that curve, the turn, and you won't notice it being all messed up there. It'll draft nicely. So once again, I'm showing off the sexy magnetism of <laughs> this polywog. Um, so we're starting with the roll lag and you just spin from the end. Um, this has been pre-drafted a little bit. I thought I got some footage of that, but evidently not. <laughs> um, and it spins just like a roll lag would. Okay, so you can spin it just like this, so no pre-drafting. Um, you can work your way around the edges. You can work your way purely from the middle. You can do kind of a hybrid pre-drafty, drafty thing. You can long draw it. It's just like any other roll log. So here you can see a close up of kind of how I'm doing that. So I alternate between kind of a fatter yarn and a thinner yarn because I'm trying to show you several different um, approaches to this spin. So while you're watching me do this, <laughs> let's talk about uh, a correction for the last video. Um, you guys got on my case a little bit in the most loving way possible uh, about using roving and combed top interchangeably, which is definitely a faux pas among the technical spinners. So I'm wondering, uh, do I do anything similar to that that drives you nuts? <laughs> Share what drives you nuts about my not so technical uh, lingo. Um, right here, I am spinning that zigzag fiber. So you can see I wrapped it into a ball to keep it neat. And I'm just spinning it the same as I would roving again. You can pre-draft it down or you can spin it the way it is. Um, that is a join that I'm working on right there. Um, and then you can see it was really short and didn't mess up my fiber at all. Oh, I love that podcast, The Year of Polygamy. I, I really love that podcast. If you're interested in Mormon history or just like interesting subcultures or anthropology, <laughs> I recommend that one. Uh, so yeah, so you just go ahead and you spin it like you would roving. You can refer back to my previous video if you want more information on that. Um, again, I am interested to hear what you guys want me to talk about. I am already filming a video on a longer prep, how to rescue ugly roving, or pardon me, combed top. <laughs> uh, see, okay, here I'm coming on a join again, and you can see how simple that was. I'm out of it already. It really kind of looks like a hot mess, but it goes so easily. Um, all right, so here is what would happen if you just had a bat in your lap. So you can hold it in a bundle like I'm doing here, or you can kind of work across the top like I'm doing here. So again, I am switching it up. This is my favorite way to spin a bat across the top though. If you lay it flat on your lap and you have, this is a brushed cotton skirt, um, and I just lay my hand gently on the top and work across. This is a little bit easier if you're working with a slightly fatter yarn and super easy if you're working with super chunky. But you can see how neatly that pulls across. There's no real stragglers. The brushed cotton of my skirt helps keep things aligned. Um, you can also use an apron if you are not a skirt wearer, <laughs> obviously. Um, presumably you could use pants. Uh, 
And so here you can see how neatly that pulls it up. The ends sometimes need a little bit of rearranging like I show you there because I find it's hard to kind of pin them down as evenly as the middle portion. But otherwise, this is by far my favorite across the top spin. Um, one of the reasons I struggle with, uh, well, I don't struggle with, I don't like it as much with comb top and roving is because <laughs> it's hard to lay it out on my lap like this. Um, so if you're trying to spin a bat exactly the way the carter intended you to, um, from top to bottom, that, that is your method. This, however, is a quick runner up to that method, the stripped method. And as long as you keep the strips in order um, to how they came off the bat or the way that you want them to be, because uh, remember, we're collaborating with the carters. They don't they don't make us do anything. We, we choose what we want to do. <laughs> uh, then you're fine. You can spin it pretty much the way it came off of the bat. Um, but again, this is basically like spinning a piece of roving or comb top. It's straight through, end to end, there's nothing fancy. However, you can join it in the middle and spin it from the fold. This isn't really from the fold. This is kind of a hybrid that I do from the fold where I just double it over. Rather than holding it over my finger, I literally just fold it in half in my hand and pull off of it. Um, Again, this is not going to yield the super smooth that the traditional from the fold would, but I like how it manipulates color in an unexpected way. I find it difficult to predict mentally how the colors are going to land when I do this, and that is fun, especially if you're trying to mix up like a color blocked bat. That can be really interesting. I feel like if you were doing a transition section between like a a blue and then the blue green transition point and then the green if you folded the blue green point like that that might be fun i don't know that's something to experiment with um yeah i'm thinking about the ways that i could experiment with that <laughs> But yeah, so this is pretty straightforward. I feel like this is the way most people do it. Here I'm alternating between end to end and from the fold. Um, that's another cool thing you can do. You can alternate the ways that you spin this to get a very subtle variation. So it keeps the fiber organic, but the prep is pretty simple. You don't have to do anything crazy. And depending on how wide your strips are, it's fairly predictable how the colors are going to land. So if you're looking for something not so scary, you can try try alternating different spinning techniques throughout the fiber. Um, you could even do strips and zigzags and roll legs and just like I did, mix it up. The bat that I spun um, was pretty plain. I carded it on purpose to not have any repeating colorways because I didn't want people to be tripped up on the color work. I was just showing you the actual techniques. So as per usual, center pole ball plying, you know how I roll. I need to mix up my plying. <laughs> I'm getting a little bored with it, but I just find it to be so satisfying and it's so relaxing. Um, so I suppose even I am a bit of a creature of repetitive comfort with my spinning. I know several of you think I'm not, but <laughs> you need only look to my addiction to the center pole ball. Uh, I also wanted to note uh, that the polywog, the kind of lazy kate on the back of it made it really easy for me to wind one of those. One of my criticisms with the Louette was it was kind of a mess to keep, like, pull it off the bobbin and all that jazz. That was, that was frustrating. But the video has ended, and I will hand you off to Talking Head Me now. <laughs>